Hi, it's Diane, and I'm ready to bind the Bobsy Twins journals that I've been working on. Um, I just want to show you, I did cover the fabric, uh, or cover the spine of the second one with fabric because it had some issues here. It, there were some thin spaces that I wanted to reinforce. So I did put um, fabric on the outside of this. I had already started making this video once. Um, I had cut my template one and a half inches because I thought the spine was one and a half inches and then I marked it and you know I was doing all that on video and I poked the poked holes in here and then I realized that the holes are too close to the front edge so I remeasured the book and it's actually one and three eighths not one and a half which actually made a difference apparently so I made a new template it's just one and three eighths inches by seven and a quarter that is the height of the pages. Now I'm going to mark, I do, um, it has three lines. I, I, did, I explained all this before. I, I have it at the right width for the spine and I fold it in half and then I take the edges and fold them to the center to give me three crease lines equally equidistant apart because I have three signatures. Okay, so then I'm going to put in five holes for the pamphlet stitch, a five, five hole pamphlet stitch. So I have my ruler that has the zero in the center and I put it on here so that the markings are the same distance on either end. So here we have it at three and five eighths and here it's three and five eighths. So that means the zero is right in the middle. So I mark the zero on the first crease line and then I'll mark it at one and a half. I usually do my holes uh, one and a half inches apart. So I have a zero, one and a half, and three. And then I want to make sure I can see that crease line. One and a half and three. Then I just move it up to the next line and I can just put my the zero on the mark that I already made. I put the ruler right underneath my crease line so I can draw on the line. That one was a little far away. And then move it on up to the third line. So I made a mistake here and marked it at one inch. Then I take my poker tool and poke holes and kind of wiggle it around a bit. It's got some sticky on it because I already poked holes in my binding and it must have gone through some tape. Okay, so I poke holes on the crease and wiggle it a little bit to make the hole big enough for my pencil lead to go through. wasn't quite on the mark. Yesterday I told you we were having a very rainy day, but we never did get thunderstorms. Today it was raining when I got up, but now it's nice out and I haven't even been out. And it's six o'clock in the evening. I should probably take a walk before or after I eat my dinner. Probably before. Go out before it gets dark. Okay, and then I write top on one end so I know. Even though they should be the same, so if they're just a little bit off and you mark one signature this way and then the next signature this way, if it's a little bit off then one signature might be up or lower than the others. So just to be safe, I mark the top. Now, I had already punched the holes in this book. And I am going to cover the spine with trim anyway because I don't like the look of the spine. So the, hole, the extra holes won't show. So I center it. This fits in here better. 
I just hope the holes aren't going to be too close together to compromise things here. Oh, what I do is now it seems close. I don't know. I'm having a hard time with this book, Gail. I don't usually have this much trouble. Okay, it seems centered in there good now. I'll see how these holes compare to the holes that are already punched. thinking about learning how to do a live chat. Would anybody, would anybody join me if I did a live chat one day? I'm going to get confused when I go to sew this in. Which hole am I supposed to be using? I mentioned in the first, the first attempt I did with this video that it might be difficult for me to do this because I have pretty poor vision and I have to get my face <laughs> right up close to things so I can see when I do close work. So I hope my head's not getting in your way. If my head's in there too much, I just won't put this up on, on YouTube. So now I've got all kinds of holes in here. I guess I can pick and choose which hole I want to use. So these, this set of holes is further away from the edge, which is what I want. Okay, let's hope this turns out right. Oh, this might not be a very good tutorial. So then I take my, it says it's waxed linen thread. I buy it at Walmart and it doesn't feel very waxy. I've bought wax linen thread at the craft stores and it's waxier but I think it's a little harder to use because um, the wax kind of builds up on the needle. And I do like this. It's, it's sturdy enough and I measure three lengths of the pages. And then I have a, I think it's a tapestry needle. I bought some more tapestry needles today. So you need to have the eye big enough for your thread, but not too wide to make gigantic holes in your materials. So I've got my thread, uh, my needle threaded. Now I am going to line the pages up the way I want them. Some of the pages are, are shorter, so I want that centered. I always have all my tags, well not always, but most of my tags are in place before I sew them together. I try to have everything pretty much done, stamping and sewing especially. Because I, I won't do the stamping and sewing after the book is sewn together. But there are some pockets where I would have to remove the tag because it might slide down and get in the way. I'm going to take that out just, just to be safe. Let's see if there's any tags back here I need to remove. Maybe I do things weird, but I'm a methodical person. And if you were watching my... Um, process videos making these journals you probably noticed that I have all my signatures together and just go page by page and do one page and then move on to the next page where I would like to be able to just do a bunch of pages and then put them all together the way I want to but I don't think that way I'm linear I guess so I have these lined up the way I want them this is the pocket that's the, the knot will be here and I will just glue this together and form a pocket. 
So I just clip at the ends. Make sure it feels like things aren't like um, bubbling, I guess. Because sometimes I feel I feel like it's a little off kilter. So when I put the last the second set on, I'll make sure it feels good when I fold it. If not, I will release one of the clamps to kind of release some tension and get things centered properly. You can see a little bit of a bubble there when I fold it. So I'm going to just open up that clamp and let it relax. Put it back on. Okay, that, that looks pretty good. I'll throw away the wrong template. This is the wider one, so that's the wrong one. Okay, so now I take, for this I don't mark the pencil holes in here because I'm just going to do one set, not three rows. So I just hold it and start in the center. Make sure it's going in the center fold here. Holding this in place all the while. Okay. And then I place it in the first set of holes, put the needle in the center hole and before I pull it all the way through oops I put the needle into the spine pull it through but leave quite a good tail I have done it before where I end up pulling the tail right out while I'm trying to finagle it into another hole so I leave a long hole so I have lots of wiggle room. And then I go down or up, it doesn't matter which, into the next hole. So you go down through the book, through the pages, and then up through the spine. And now I'm going down through the pages again. pulling it tight so this thread is nice and taut and not loosey-goosey. Then I go back into this hole that I came out of before. Then I skip the center and go right up to this one above the center. And then up to the top one or the bottom one, depending on which way you went first time. Back down to the second one. Pulling it tight. This, this um, stitch down here is a little bit crooked, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to cover the spine with lace. And then I'm going back up to the middle hole, and the thread is on this side of the thread. So I'm going to come up on the other side. And then tie a good, tight knot. Make sure it's all tight.
I do try to get the stitches straight. I'm not always successful. And I'm having some difficulties with this book. Gail, if you don't want this book, I understand. The integrity should be good, and I will cover up the stitches with lace. It's good and solid in there. So there's one signature, and I will repeat the process with two and three. And I'll do the same with the other book and hopefully have a better, a better um, outcome with it because I don't want to cover that pretty fabric. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. And I'll be back with a flip through of both journals when they're all done. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.